Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Dusty Circuit here again for... This will be episode three of my series about kind of my history on ACO. And the last video kind of got a bit rambly, but where I left off was that basically uh, ACO is in decline. And I had a, f a, a few friends that still were on the server to keep me company. And I want to say uh, thanks to those friends, I didn't really, I didn't leave the server as oft as soon as many of uh, people probably would have expected. And. In fact, I were I was to keep my subscription going th throughout basically all of the silent period, and while while many players actually ended their subscriptions because they thought the server was dead, not to come back any anytime soon. And no joke, like probably. Half to three quarters of the of the members have have left the basically left the discord because, probably because either they left voluntarily or uh a f removed them because they weren't paying for their their subscriptions anymore and in fact, kind of during the revival period, there was sort of like a like a big kind of cleanup of uh, basically removing all the inactive members. So we're just left with active members. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll active in terms of uh, their subscription, not necessarily how often they play. And uh, yeah. And so... Kind of where we left off here, at least with this particular location, as as it's of course it's now the site of the community iron farm, but right next to it was Colgutton's uh, old base or one of his. So it's one of the very first uh, projects that me and Colgutton did together, and it's kind of what brought us together and made us friends. And. This is basically uh, as close of a a replica to Mumbo's base as uh, as uh, Colgutton was able to get just by watching uh, back his YouTube videos and just uh, building what he saw in the videos. And. And as for the nether, I don't, I'm not sure if I'll really be able to show that because at least the, by now the old nether hub has been, uh, torn down. But I, but, but, but I did re record, uh, I do have a video about where I, that was sort of my own post-mortem on the, the old nether hub if you want to, if you want to see that, and I, and I could link it in the description. And as soon as I get rid of these guys, we can I could at least do some kind of a tour. Okay, and this is, is also the storage room, although it was never really complete. And this was basically, like, even meant to be auto-sorting and everything, but just we never actually got that, that, that part of it uh, complete. And 
And actually for quite a while, I, rather than living and working on my own base, I, I, I just lived in Colbutton's base and just kind of helped him build parts of it and and I, and I even kept my stuff in his storage room as if I was living here. But 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 Colgut never never really. But but Colgut didn't mind that at all. And in fact, he's kind of such the, the kind of person that doesn't mind actually losing his gear and starting over. In fact, he does that on purpose, because that's just how he... that's how he enjoys the game, but, uh... It's, uh... But I am pretty much think the opposite. I try to avoid death, and... If anything, I just... avoid death as long as possible. And, uh, yeah. And another thing about this base is that kind of that whole thing in the middle that that was a, a guardian farm, and and in fact it was uh, it was one of the, it was basically one of the XP farms I'd use most often, and it's like when I literally whenever I needed to get levels I would come down the cool good space and farm XP there ra rather than. Well, I didn't actually have an XP farm until later on. But but even when I got my own XP farm, that one I think was still faster, and I just still wanted to keep using that. And over here, this was like a combination sugarcane farm and mob farm. And in fact, this also inspired uh, me to build another mob farm. That's kind of largely based on this whole concept, and I even copied this whole design as well. And I even have a video about it on my YouTube, but by now I passed the ownership of it to Iota because I don't really need the farm anymore. And, and in fact, I had to shut it down before because it was causing lag on the server, but... That was also when Atlantis was causing lag, so it was kind of making the problem worse, and kind of I had to shut it down for that part of mostly that reason. But Iota had plans for it, so I just rather than to, to tear the whole farm down, I just passed the ownership on to him, and it's his farm now, and he can do whatever he wants to it. And I think I recall he actually had some pretty interesting plans for it. Like, he think he wanted to build, like, a rocket out of it, which uh, I think would be... I don't think he actually really got to finishing that, but when he does finish it, it would look cool. I am going to get out of this area because it's really wagging me. And that was just a villager breeder that I, which I think I used to farm the get the villagers to build that iron farm. And there are, actually was an iron farm before that one, but it didn't actually turn out too well. And I'll just I'll just cut the video until I get to that area. Oh, anyway, here we are uh, at, at the. Well, I guess this is kind of the failed iron farm, and I guess you could rec you many of you probably recognize this particular design, 
is it because it's the Iron Phoenix? And yes, Koga and Nexi kind of wanted to try and see if we could build the Iron Phoenix on ACO. And those of you who don't know, it's basically it's one of the big one of the like the largest like craziest iron farms you could make. Like in the when, like in 1.12 and prior Iron Golem uh, spawning mechanics before what, the 1.13 update. No, no, it was in 1.14 that the villages changed. But basically, like it works on the principle of basically uh, every one of those layers of doors that you could see there would be would form an individual village, and. And I think this basically could have 64 villages all in one area, which would spawn iron golems at a pretty insane rate. But the reason why there's all this extra redstone and stuff around is because that in order to one of the one of the problems that plagued kind of the previous design, which I think was the up the of course, this was by Tango Tech, but the previous one by Tango, which I think was the Iron Trench, if memory serves, that was plagued by a problem where if, where, where if the chunks unload and then reload, the villages are would merge together into one larger village, and which, of course, would severely impact the rates of the farm, as it would only be one village instead of 64 villages. And basically, of course, that version of the farm actually works on, if you shoot items through another portal, it keeps the chunks loaded. But, of course, that would not definitely not be possible on the ECO. So, We've uh, had to use this this kind of improved design that rather than using por a portal, it, it, it just you just would have all this redstone, and we we there, there was would have been a villager that would move up and down in that loop there. That would basically that coupled with like these pistons here that would. Ex well, there were pistons here that would extend and retract those blocks, which would then, like, if, if block the sunlight access to the doors, and then, the, and then that, I guess, yeah, that coupled with the villager over there would, would reset the the farm, and of course that procedure would happen whenever you just start using the farm and. Basically, you'd have to AFK, I think, for about an hour or two before the farm even can run at its full capacity. But once it's once that once that's done, you can AFK the farm whenever you want, and then get tons of iron. And unless, and I guess, until the next time you leave and come back to the area, you'll have to do that startup procedure again. And I may have also did some more AFK fishing here, so this is more items I could bring bring back to my base. But if memory serves, we could we were never really able to get this farm working, and in fact, I think even Aquena even found something about. Uh, that, that in the video it said that it wasn't, there was something, I don't remember what it was, but there's some mechanic that's specific to spigot that would prevent this farm from working. And of course, well then ACO was spigot, now it's paper, but, uh, but then I think someone on Autcraft actually found a way around that, and they were able to get a, get an Iron Phoenix working over there. But the but of course then the uh, then Autcraft updated, and all those farms broke. And 
And so, of course, we, we, what we had to go to with entirely new iron farms at that, by that point. And, but that very same change also broke this farm over here, which it was, which basically it was the exact same kind of thing as that other iron farm that I had to decommission on Autcraft because it was too big. But, of course, it was using that classic, like, tower design that it, I believe was popularized by Doc M. But, of course, that was, uh, like, but, like, like, Doc M 77, but that was then, of course, when the villager, that the iron golem spawning mechanics changed, that design broke. So... Well, I'll see you at the at the next build. This was that uh, this uh, a tree farm used to be here, but. Uh, if I remember correctly, I actually tore it down because it kind of it, it's always had problems. Like it would always break, and well, it was a farm. It was a tree farm that was by El Mango, but it was designed in 1.11, and I'm guessing either something changed in the game that made it keep breaking, or possibly something with spigot made it not work well. So, there was basically, a, but it was a very complex design that used a lot of pistons, and and it's like basically it would convert the the wood stream from the from the leaf crusher down to basically from a one by twelve or or however tall the wood is down to two, one by one. And so we just feed it into the kind of the uh, wood storage chamber one block at a time. But in order to do that, it used a lot of like like complex uh, piston mechanisms and also a lot of zero tick uh, pulse generators and a lot of and and. and zero tick piston uh, extenders as well and I'm guessing that was just so, so much complexity that the farm would just break and uh, yeah and this actually was another villager breeder that I think this was the first one I had built and then that was actually a minecart track that I built to care, bring villagers from here over to that other breeder that was by the iron farm. So, uh, just so I don't have to bring villagers all the way from here, I could just start another breeder over there. And just get, get villagers that way. And I don't entirely remember what the purpose of this was, but there's also sugar cane growing here. So I'm probably going to regret this decision, but let's go through them with this nether portal. It seems to not be working. If anyway, this oh, here is actually another one of my oldest uh, mega projects on ACO, and as you can see, it is a huge netherwort farm. 
ends. Well, the original purpose of it was is uh, Colgutton wanted to build. Uh, like at one point, Colgutton really wanted to build uh, Tangle Tech's uh, base. I believe, I believe from from season five of Hermitcraft, and I believe it was season five. But and if if anyone who has been fall who's followed Hermitcraft is watching my videos, that that base used a ton of Nether warts. and like it was like it was another themed base, and it used a lot of the. The red nether brick and the nether nether warp blocks, and well, I just decided to. Move, I'm just gonna make a farm that I just get tons of nether warp from, and and then and another reason I made the farm this big is so that I'd be able to just sit in that water stream and then just AFK. And then basically I'd go down the water stream, harvest all the, the the nether wart and replant at the same time, and then go down this to go down here, then go down the next row, and then go down this row, and then re repeat the entire process until I get to the whole end get to the end of the farm. And then and then, and then just the water would just loop all the way around and then take me back to the start. And then by the time I reach the back reach the beginning again, the, the nether wart will be fully grown. And then basically that just that whole cycle would repeat. And if I would have made the farm smaller than this, I would have had to design some kind of holding cell that would keep me that uh, that that'll just kind of keep me in a in a certain position until the the nether wart would, would be fully grown again and and then and then I'd also have to make a timer to to uh to to, to, to hold me in the holding cell long enough before the nether wart will be grown again. And well, I could have done that. I just thought, well, just I'll just make the farm big enough where I'm not going to need a timer. So that's just kind of what I did. And and I mean, by and by the time I actually completed that this whole that whole project, Colgutton had kind of moved on to another project. So this farm was just. It never met its original purpose, and I just kind of left it here to rot, basically. And that's by now I kind of have to tear it down because it's definitely. If Blue sees it, she's going to be like, well, oh, Dusty, tear that farm down. It's too big. So it's probably what I'm going to have to do very shortly. But it's just another thing on my long list of s things I have to do, and I've just been putting it off, and yeah. But eventually, but it has to be done, and I'll get to it soon. This is another old project of mine, well... It was mostly my project, but Colgutton, uh, well, let's just say Colgutton one day went on a expedition and kind of in this uh, desert and mesa area, and he found uh, three, basically three dungeons all next to one another, and like those two were zombie spawners, and that one was a skeleton spawner. And they're all close enough that you could just AFK and all three spawners would be active. And and this has been a kind of a useful XP farm for me, though. I mostly just use the Guardian farms because they're faster. But in times when the server's very busy, 
this this is a good it's kind of a good farm to have because of being spawner based it's not gonna depend on mob cap and in theoretically at least in theory it shouldn't cause as much lag as a a, a, a large gar guardian farm or a, a mob a mob farm especially with, with using redstone so I really I really want to keep this farm uh, really as long as I'm really allowed to or yeah and in fact there are during times when my mob farm either I can't run it because there's too many players on or the mob cap is low. This farm kind of at least fills the part the need of uh, bones and uh, uh, rotten flesh. But uh, of course gunpowder I still need the mob farm for. And this was a squid farm but it never really worked very well, and uh, and of course uh, when when 1.13 came out, they basically the ability to put a squid farm in any biome no longer was the case. You have to put it in a either an ocean or a river biome, and this is in a desert biome, so it no longer works. And this, by the way, was from a prank from Boyd that I never bothered cleaning up. <laughs> and this whole tunnel, by the way, or this, I guess, corridor, I guess you could call it, uh, is designed entirely by Colgut. And yes, uh, some, he, he doesn't always just copy from YouTube videos. He does have kind of a creative, like, I mean, if he puts his brain to it, he can come up with uh, with some cool builds. And this was kind of one of his uh, creations. I really would like to use this some, for something else. If, uh, like, like, I mean, I'd love to probably give the rest of this farm a facelift to kind of more match this and possibly maybe put something down there just kind of to give you, give me a reason to still use this hallway because it's just awesome. And I spent a lot of time building this. I would have... This is kind of when I first was introduced to Schematica, and Cole Gutten would have built this in Creative, and I would have built this on ACO using the Schematica mod. And, and yeah. And also this farm went through several different changes because, like, I think 1.13 broke the mob evader so I had to come up with a new mob evader design using the, the bubble columns and well I could have I guess done it a simpler way I just what I did is I just have the mobs go into there and then that would trigger a tripwire which then the slime block would go out on a double extender and push the mobs into the water stream or elevator And lately I've also been using this desert to get my sand, so it's kind of the reason it looks, it's in this state. And actually if we, if we look on the map, that desert over there is, used to also be a mining desert. So, well this area I don't really particularly care that much about, like this mining it for resources so that's just kind of what I've been doing and plus I've just been too lazy to make find a desert just far away and make a portal there and in fact I'm 
What are we down to one portal? And I can't have any more than one more portal. Because I'm using nine of my ten portals. So I just kind of have to just make the best of what I have now. And I don't rem entirely remember when I would have built this farm, but I know it was kind of during the, it was definitely during the silent period, and I think it would have been a bit before I would have met Colgutton, or I think I would have known him still, but I kind of built the sugar cane farm out of necessity because I needed, I, I needed sugar cane to make firework rockets because uh, as soon as I got Elytra, that became my main source of transportation, and it still is to this day. It's just absolutely nothing else in the game can touch it. Like, just like you could just fly, and like fly as long as you have the fireworks, and just nothing else can beat it. And I mean, when like I when I played Minecraft before the horses were even a thing, and basically. Like when horses were first added, I thought they were the best, they, they were a game changer, but the Elytra is yet another game changer, and they kind of made the horses a bit obsolete. And so, yeah. And I just remember there would think there was one more thing I forgot to show at the that base number two in the previous video. This would have been, I think, the first mob farm that I built. And I think then this was a bit, this was more early on. And later on, I would have used, actually started using that mob farm that was in Colgutton's base. But before then, I would have used this mob farm. And uh, oddly enough, it was also based on one of Mumbo's designs that he had used in many of his ba different bases, as, as you can see. You pro probably can't see it very well, but it's kind of that same design if you're familiar with Mumbo and Hermitcraft. And... And I even had, and I just had this t clock, I had this, I had this hopper clock that would just turn the like the water for the spawning pads on and off. And that, that would just toggle on whenever I'm to use the farm. This I would have added like kind of later on, but it's just so I could AFK fish and mob farm at the same time. And of course this is my AFK pool. And for a little while, I had a stock of stockpile of books over here, but I would have emptied that out. But still have all this stuff. But I literally have like almost no use for most of the things you get from fishing, except for the the, the enchanted books. Where it's like, and it's like I even sold, began selling saddles in my shop. But I haven't gotten very many 
players buying them, so I'm guessing a lot of players prefer Elytra over horses, but it's not just me. And then eventually I'm going to actually sort through all that stuff, because... And I'm probably going to, in the few, like, months before ACO is to update to 1.16, I'm probably going to do a lot of AFK fishing, because in 1.16, AFK fishing was finally patched for good. And... Meaning, well, if 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 I'm if just kind of just it's one of those like window of opportunity kind of things where like just, should I just get as much as I can out of it or should I just uh, push it off till it's too late and I just I kind of rather take the former. This over here was a witch farm, and it was yet another uh, project that I helped Colgut uh, build, and these houses were just kind of a side project of that, and his plan that it was he wanted to do like a medieval kind of village, although that actually is a bit of a recurring theme in his uh, build style. Which, uh, I, can, I mean, I do enjoy these kind of builds with him. It's kind of very relaxing, and it's like, I mean, I mean, it's yes that we, it's it's fun that we get to also play Overwatch and lately War Thunder and other games together. But it's uh, it's just whenever me and Colgut and get to just go on to ACO and just do these little builds like this. Even if we're just copying from a YouTube video, it's just, uh, I just find it just, it's like, it's, it's like coming home for me because like Minecraft uh, is still the game I play the most. And whenever me and Colgutton get to come back to Minecraft and get building and it's just, it's like coming home to me. Yeah, you know, I guess you guys get what I mean. And as for this witch farm, we did get it working, but the spawn rates weren't really terrific. And I, it just, I guess kind of for that reason, it, it, it kind of went on the back burner. Well, it was also, that, this was also about the time where Colgut and had uh, decided to take a break from Minecraft. Well, well, there was one more build that I'd like to show you. Oh, but this was also another build. Sometimes you would also... He, he also would do modern houses as well. And... Which I also enjoyed building with them. It's... So it's like it's like he'd often go through phases where he prefers medieval building and another phase where he prefer modern building and and I mean I never really uh, questioned it's just that whenever he he gave me something to do I kind of saw it as something to do and we that's kind of another reason we were friends. It's just, you know, we had to be both of something in common, and we enjoy doing that thing we have in common together. And this was one of the last projects that Colgutton had, uh, had started working on before his break. This was supposed to be a uh, Wells Knight's castle. Which, I, if, I remember, if memory serves, I think would have also been from Season 5 on Hermitcraft. But, if, if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments section. But, uh, 
if I ever, if memory serves, I, to, to even build this much of it, I think would have taken like about a month or so. And, and of course, back then we also had a, I also had a given Colgutten access to Mod Killer's uh, creative server, but uh, but 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 he didn't mind. And lately, that was just and but but and lately that was how, how me and Colgutten had planned these builds out in creative. And mind you, this was before Autcraft Creative, so it's not like that was really an option for us. We just had to. If we wanted to be on a creative server, we together we had to have to find one or make our own. Like that, that like like that was the that that, that was the er, the era that we were living in when we when this build took place. And. And also, I believe at the point where that iron farm got shut down, and I think also, actually, when 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 I got banned that one time of over that that vindicator farm, I think that that, that was also when this project was uh, was in progress. But of course, uh, the, we never finished the keep and. I think the wall was meant to have another layer on the inside, but that was when, kind of when this construction was halted. And, yeah. And, and later on, uh, I think after probably about a few months playing Fortnite and with Colgutten and Overwatch, we, we had uh, returned to do more builds on ACO. And if memory serves, this still would have been in the silent period, though much later on. And... I think actually a bit earlier on in the year that uh, if memory serves would have been earlier on in the year that like like later on in that year ACO would update to 1.13 and and then that would begin the revival period of ACO and and of course I'll bring up the timeline about now so that you could see uh, of course to use it as a visual aid and yeah now from I'm gonna have to I don't actually have a portal to this location but there was another location where Colgutten had just had built another hub like 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 house like kind of starter house and where and I think from there we we would have just had a mine set up, or which like we say would have started mining. But that was also the location of a uh, of the first community drown farm. Where, but it was literally just a uh, like a pit under the ocean where the, the drown would spawn, and then blue and BB and. M m many other of the players, kind of back when Atlantis first had started, and have been using that farm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look at that video and find the coordinates. But uh, this video is kind of running on as it is, and yeah. And to kind of close this off. Me and Colgutten and I have really, uh, 
we, we've really been great friends. And even to this day, we're still great friends, even though he doesn't really play Minecraft as much as uh, he used to. And, and in fact, uh, pretty soon, I'm, I'd am i like to actually start recording videos of, uh, of like, us playing different games, but uh, just, like, up upload them to my channel, because that's how my channel started. And, and of course, Ida wouldn't mind that, so... I guess uh, you should probably expect to see some more of those videos coming shortly. And, especially once I get my new computer parts, uh, my, up, my, my video uploading is gonna speak it faster anyway. So yeah, because uh, right now, having to wait three hours for, or even like over one hour for a 30 minute video is just kind of ridiculous, especially if uh, on average, like on my most busy of times, I have like about probably three to four hours of a uh, recording uh, of videos about, like, if, if I have about several hours of footage to upload every week, that would, uh, that would kind of get, get old pretty fast. And, I mean, and while my internet would still, would still be a limiting factor in how fast I can upload content to YouTube, at least, uh, Getting an upgrade in my CPU is going to at least speed up my rendering time significantly. And... And, uh, yeah. And... And also, uh... Probably in the next uh, video I'm gonna talk about, about uh, how I got to know Quinna more and how kind of my friendship with him went, went, went on, went about, and much like Colgut, and I'm, we're still friends to this day, but he's, uh, his thing is that he often gets, uh, busy with, with life, because of course he has, uh, work, and, you know, and he's also introduced me to other games as well, and, and I mean, we're still friends to this day, it's just he's been less active as of lately. And, uh, yeah. So, thank you all for watching this video. Remember to rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And this has been Dusty Circuit. This is Dusty Circuit signing off. Bye!